Welcome this afternoon. Wait, one more. Welcome. Welcome this afternoon. Welcome as we gather as God's people in this space and place of grace, as together we will mourn the death of Frank, but as we will celebrate his life so well lived and so well loved.
And if you will, please stand. And now welcome in the name of Christ Jesus. We are gathered to worship. We are gathered to proclaim Christ crucified and risen. And we are gathered to remember before God today, our brother Frank, and to truly, truly give you thanks for his life and to commend him to our merciful redeemer and to comfort one another in our sadness. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And let us pray. O oh God, you are a God of grace and a God of glory. Together in this place today, we remember before you our brother Frank, and we truly thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our own pilgrimages on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are all gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. If you will, please join together in hymn number 765 in your red hymnal, Lord of all hopefulness. And if you will, please be seated. And now we continue today with a reading taken from Romans 8, verses 38 through 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends our first reading. The second reading today is going to be from Psalm 23. We're going to read this in unison. Psalm 23 was a psalm that Frank recited, I am told, 
every day while he was a prisoner of war. And so we read Psalm 23. Please join. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. That was perfect. That was Frank's, also his favorite instrument is the oboe, Sakaya. And Anne, thank you. That was so beautiful. Please stand as we read the gospel today. Taken from John 14 through 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Here ends the gospel reading for today. Please be seated. Frank Goplin, where do I start? Where do I start as I reflect on his life? Well, first is this. Well done, O good and faithful, faithful servant. I know God would have started with that one. The second one is this. I start with pie. Apple peach, blueberry, pie. You might ask me why. Because 
One morning, only a few days after Frank had died, I received a text from Mary, the most loving, endearing of texts that Anne and Mary thought of as they were traveling. They had forgot to tell me he liked to order pie and share it. I thought about that line, how endearing and loving it was sent. He liked to order pie and share it. And I think perhaps it is the most fitting and amazing metaphor for this amazing life that he shared and lived and loved with you, his family, and all of us as friends. All of us, somehow he shared a piece of his pie with all of us. Frank Goplin, while he delighted in life like he delighted in pie, the simple joys of life, he just enjoyed them, loved them. He enjoyed sunrises and sunsets, babies, like little Sage, whom he last held not so long before he died. He loved dogs, especially little Comet. Oh, he loved you, his family. He loved us, his friends. And many, many times he would say to me, oh, Margie, I have been so blessed. The blessings of every day, the blessings of things that were simple but oh so good. And in saying that, it reminds us to see the blessings of our own life, doesn't it? To see the blessings of everyday life, of sunrises and sunsets, babies and dogs and families and friends. Despite his hardships, all the challenges that we might see, Frank would say, see the blessings in your life. Frank, oh my, he shared his blessings, didn't he? He shared all of the blessings that he was given, and he shared them with us with a zest and an enthusiasm and his incredible passion for life. His name probably could be Frank Francis Generous Goplin, to tell you his full real name. He shared not just his pie, Oh, but he shared his resources. He shared his knowledge all the way up to the end when he even shared his knowledge on egg coffee, having an argument with his daughter Mary about how to make egg coffee, I think, almost the day before he died. <laughs> he shared his authentic, wonderful Frank self, his gregarious spirit, his humor, which sometimes couldn't even be shared here today. <laughs> he shared his talents. He shared his life. He shared whatever he could, whenever he could, didn't he? And oh my, he was just so humble. You told me Frank never thought he was anybody special. But all of us who knew him, we know different. He was humble, humble as apple pie. Most of us will never know his generosity. We will never know all the places that he gave his resources to, those he helped financially or with his genuine empathy and way of making others feel seen and valued and deeply loved. As Mary said, your mom, probably didn't even know all the places that your dad gave money. Probably a really good thing. <laughs> so Frank Goplin, can you see him? I will always see him sitting right there. I will always see him. And now in his dying, he has left a huge hole in all of our hearts. It's never going to be filled by anybody else. And that's the way it should be when you love someone so deeply. And how, how deeply and dearly
you will be missed, won't he? You, Ruth, Mary, Anne, Sony, and all of his family, his cherished family, and family by choice, nieces, nephews. I can't imagine the emptiness in his dying that you must feel that is left for you. 100 years he graced this marvelous, beautiful earth. And for you, his family, how many, many, many years you got to have him around. And when you have somebody around that long, Wow, the missing is so intense. And you, in his last couple of weeks before he died, you, his family, you kept such vigil of love around him. Do you know Frank was never alone in those two weeks? Somebody was always on the bed with him, talking with him about funny things and strange things like egg coffee and stuff like that. He even let my dog jump up on his bed. Come on, Barrington. And he snuggled up with Barrington. He held little Sage. You kept vigil with your dad that only love like that could be. So I asked you for words to describe Frank Goplin. And at this point, you probably all want to yell out words that would describe him, but please don't. It would take for a very long time. But you, Mary Ann, and Sony, Ruth was unable to be there. But we gathered around the table at your house, and I said, give me some words that describe this man. Words like unconditional love, loyal, gentle, caring, humble, rock, strong, prankster, honest, steadfast in his faithfulness. He was generous. He was giving. He was an optimist. He didn't let things get him down. He loved to learn. He was so intelligent. And then you said he was very progressive, especially with women's rights. At that point, a table of women raised their hands and said, yay for Frank. He was a champion of women, and he taught you, his daughters, there's nothing you cannot do or accomplish. Did you know that Frank Goplin hired the first woman engineer at IBM? He was a devoted husband to Edie, and I was thinking for 69 years they were married, and I thought, maybe it was your mother who taught him well to be such an advocate for strong women. <laughs> as you. He didn't have much of a chance, did he? <laughs> and then at this point, as we were talking and sharing and laughing, sometimes through tears, sometimes just good laughing, Sony would walk by me. She stood by my paper as I was writing this all down, was jotting all these wonderful things down about Frank Goplin. Sony stood by me. She tapped my paper. He was a stubborn Norwegian. <laughs> I, wrote it, I wrote it down. We continued, we continued to share some more. Sony walked by again, looked over at my paper. Stubborn Norwegian again. I think perhaps three times Sony passed my paper that day. You told me, when Frank set his mind on something, he set his mind on what he wanted done. And so here we are today, in this space and place of grace, in this place that Frank loves so much. We're gathered here in the sacred and holy presence of God, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We are gathered here in the presence of this triune God, whom Frank believed and lived his whole life. He believed it with his whole heart and his whole big, huge soul. It's here today in this place where we gather here because we pray our goodbyes to Frank. But we pray our goodbyes, which, mean go, which means go with God. We pray in 
sure confidence that Frank has gone now into the very heart of God eternally. Go with God, Frank, forever and ever in the light and love of this God you served with your whole being, this God who you entrusted all of your life to through the incredible trials and the incredible joys. Frank, while he never pretended to be a saint, oh no, he didn't at all. He would sometimes tell me of the things that he had done before, just to make sure I didn't think he was perfectly a saint. And you, the burger boys, well, and maybe a few of others, you have stories to tell about Frank, not to be mentioned here, Mary said, <laughs> but you have stories to tell that will make you laugh for a long, long time, and perhaps you might even blush. Frank's life was not without challenges. It was not always easy, as we know. Far from it. He grew up separated from his brothers and sisters when they were all little, when their mom and dad died, and his dad had to leave them all in different homes as he made his way to Chicago to support the family. And most of us know here well of his service in the Army. Being a B-24 pilot, I think I asked him five or six or seven times, what was that kind of pilot you were again? He was a B-24 pilot in World War II and shot down in Germany where he became a POW in the Nazi prison camp for a year. It was when he was nine or 10 years old that he flew a four tri motor plane with his dad. And from then on, he wanted to become a pilot. And it was then his life, it became his lifelong dream and love of being a pilot. You shared with me that it was his faith that got him through that time as a POW that when I, as I said, he shared that 20, he read the 23rd Psalm every day while he was a prisoner of war. And Frank, as an army man, you shared with me, Anne, that he taught you this. Frank knew well that freedom is not free. But from these hardships and all the others, family hardships, personal hardships, all the hardships and struggles. Frank took these, took his life, and made it all about sharing his pie. It is said of a human being, it's not what happens to a person that defines them, but what they do with it. And Frank took his life, and he did with it to love this world and love and serve God. Frank Goplin, perhaps it's time to wrap this up, but well, I can't just yet. I can hear Frank saying to me, oh, stop talking now, keep it short. No one wants to hear all this about old me, to which I would reply, oh, Frank, I think we do. This tall, big giant of a man. Did you ever see his hands? They were huge. As I sat with him in the last couple of weeks, I just kept looking at those hands. But did you know those hands? They could do intricate things. He did hardanger. Hardanger is a needle skill, in case you didn't know. He did hardanger. He loved work, woodworking, which we have examples of his woodworking around us, intricate and beautiful and designed. And he also was an excellent seamstress. I don't think you call a guy a seamstress, but I don't know what else to call him. He was an excellent seamstress. He created beautiful metalworking, tiny, precise markings and, etchi and etchings. And those big hands were gentle and loving as he loved to hold little babies as he did sage. He loved hunting and boating 
And of course, he loved fishing up north. He loved making delicious pancakes, I'm told, playing cards and cribbage for sure, as Kelly, you said. But he never would just let you win. Oh, and he loved nature. And then he loved fast cars. Did you see his lately his new big blue pickup? I think he bought it when he was 98 or 99. And he was the premier Lefsa maker. And he made Lefsa turners for so many people. Frank Goplin, what a life. And there is so much more. But yes, it's time to wrap this up. But his life, it will never be wrapped up. His legacy can never be wrapped up. He will live on and on and on, won't he? He will live on in your lives as family, for sure. In all of our lives who have loved him and known him. And he will live on in all the generations to come. For baby Sage and even those left to be born. While Frank was in hospice, his hospice nurse asked him this. What do you hope for, Frank? And Frank said, peace. And she said, oh, peace for you. And Frank said, no, peace for the world. And so Frank Goplin, may we all share our piece of pie with the same kind of generosity, grace, and gratitude you did and taught us well. And top it off with love a la mode. And may we, each of us, order up every day of our lives peace for us, for all of us, in this war-torn world. And yet, as Frank saw it, a world that is wide and beautiful. Frank Goplin, God's eternal peace forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon.
I would like to read the poem High Flight by John Gillespie McGee Jr., who was also a fellow aviator in World War II. My grandfather was my hero and my inspiration for so many choices I have made in my life. One of my proudest, proudest moments was him presenting me my retirement flag after 24 years in the Air Force. I was so proud that he could share that moment with me. My grandfather loved his country, he loved flying, he loved service, and above all, he loved God. I think this poem captures all of that, and it was one of his favorites. Oh, how I have slipped the surly bounds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I have climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence, hovering there, I have chased the shouting wind along flung my eager craft through the footless halls of air, up, up along the delirious burning blue, I have topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where ne'er a lark nor an eagle flew. And while the silent lifting mind I have trod, the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touch the face of God. Fly high, Grandpa, I love you. And if you will, please stand as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Creator God, here in this place now, we entrust to you eternally into your very heart, Frank. Give to him, we pray and we trust, eternal rest and peace in your presence. Heart to United, we truly thank you for the gift of Frank's life, how he shared and lived and loved and served you for his life, deepest, deepest thanks. And God of comfort, now in this time of deep grief and sorrow, we lift up to you Frank's family and his friends. Give to each one of us strength and courage to face days ahead. Surround each person, especially his family, with your love and your comfort, and especially may they find peace in knowing that you are a God who is with us always. Merciful God, look in now with compassion on all of us who are so saddened. Take our pain and our sorrow and give to us your healing touch. Help us to find comfort in the midst of our grief knowing that you are as close as the very breath we breathe. May each of us feel your presence and experience your peace that passes all understanding. Christ Jesus, in the, faith of, in the face of death, may we be reminded of the fragility of life. Help us to truly, truly take, to never take life for granted not ours, nor the life of anyone. Teach us to count our days, to treasure those days, that each one of us may gain a heart of wisdom and grace 
Help us to cherish our loved ones, to live each day with deep gratitude and kindness as Frank did. And may his life truly inspire us, as I'm certain it will, to love more deeply, to share our pie. And now, God of hope, we look to you in the midst of sorrow. We look to you in memories of joy. We trust in the promise of your resurrection and new life. Strengthen our faith, the kind that Frank had, that we may find hope even in the darkest of times. May the light of your love shine brightly in our hearts, guiding us through the shadow of death and into the joy of your presence every day. And now together as your people, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, that you teach us to live each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing together, as we think, think of Frank, as his, one of his last wishes was that there would be peace. And now let us commend Frank to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. And now into your hands, O oh beautiful Savior, we commend your servant, Frank. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. Receive Frank into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And from this place, may all of us please join together in food and fellowship, lots of stories and memories of this most remarkable and wonderful and loving man. Frank Goblin, you will be so, so missed. Let us go forth in peace in the arms and the love and the company of Christ Jesus. <laughs>